We recently put together a three-part software setup guide on PropWashed and wanted to make a video guide to accompany the Betaflight configuration article. This video is going to cover all the minimum steps needed to set up the software for your racing drone using the Betaflight configurator. If you're looking for information on flashing firmware onto your flight controller or flashing BL Heli onto your ESCs, check out the articles in the description. Similarly, if you're looking for a specific step, check out the description where we've time-coded all of the different sections in this video. Okay, so before we get started, this guide makes a few assumptions. First, you're configuring a quadcopter with the motors hooked up in a standard configuration. Second, that your RX is connected via PPM or Serial RX. Third, that you've configured BL Heli on your ESCs, preferably following our BL Heli setup guide, which can again be found on PropWashed. And finally, that your transmitter has been configured properly. If you're using a different setup, don't worry. Certain parts of this video may not be relevant to you, but if that's the case, check out the Betaflight documentation. It's gonna be a great resource for you if you get hung up on any of the software setup or the setup just doesn't go exactly as planned. The first thing you wanna do anytime you're messing with your quadcopter while it's plugged in is remove the props. Similarly, make sure that your transmitter is on and correctly bound to your quadcopter. Configuring your quad with Betaflight for the first time can be a little bit daunting. There's a lot of tabs and a lot of configuration options to play around with that might not be intuitive to new pilots. Our goal is to take you through all the necessary steps to get you in the air as quickly as possible. At the same time though, feel free to browse around and explore the different options. Just make sure that you read up on what you're actually setting up before activating or changing any settings within Betaflight. In general, when you're finished with the tab, be sure to hit the save and reboot button before moving on to the next section. One last note before we jump in. All configuration software on the market, be it Betaflight, CleanFlight, whatever, it's changing pretty rapidly. Things get moved around or added consistently with each update. If you notice that the UI isn't exactly the same as the setup here, don't worry. We plan to keep our written article on PropWashed updated constantly to account for any UI changes. That said, the names of the tabs should more or less stay the same. Speaking of changes, while filming this video, we had to update our written guide due to an addition of an expert mode switch that was added to the top right corner of the app. So the first thing that we're going to want to do on a new install of Betaflight after connecting to our flight controller would be to press that corresponding button to enable expert mode. This is going to let us configure important settings like the flight controller failsafe. Next, we're going to want to make sure all the gyro axes are all working correctly. Easy way to test this is to just physically move your quadcopter around and make sure that the movements match on screen. If things don't line up, just make sure that your flight controller is mounted facing the correct direction on your quad. If you're using Serial RX, you're going to want to activate the Serial RX checkbox and then click save and reboot. You're going to use either UART2 or UART3, so check your flight controller manual to find out which one. More often than not, it's going to be 3, but if not, you can go back to 2. If you're using PPM, you can skip this step. Alright, so for the configuration section, we're going to move down the left column, then the right column for this tab. The first thing to do here is set up the receiver mode. For the most part, this is going to either be RX PPM or RX Serial. This is going to be based on what receiver you're using, so check any included documentation or the packaging on your receiver. Google can also help here if needed. If you're using RX Serial, you're going to have to select the type. We listed all the different types and matching serial receiver providers on screen. Feel free to pause the video now if you just need to take a quick note. Select the matching provider for your RX type as applicable, and again, this is only if you're going to be using Serial RX. Next, set up the ESC motor features. If you're following our BL Heli setup guide, this is actually going to be a pretty easy step. Just copy the information that's shown on screen now so that the values will work correctly with the ESC setup we did previously. And again, you can pause the video here or see the larger screenshots on PropWash.com. Under System Configuration, we recommend beginners start out with the F3 defaults of 2kHz for the gyro update frequency and 1kHz for the PID loop frequency. If you're using an F1 flight controller, these may default to different values, but we still recommend you change them to 2 and 1 respectively. Finally, in other features, enable black box. Then hit save and reboot to save all of your settings. After setting up your configuration, let's go to the receiver tab next. Here you're going to see a bunch of bars that will adjust based on moving the sticks and switches on your transmitter. The first thing you need to do if you fly with the Tyrannus, FlySky, Turnigy, or Spectrum Radio will also be to change the channel map to TAER1234. After fixing this, we can test the inputs. Assuming that you bound everything correctly, moving the sticks on your transmitter should show a similar movement within Betaflight. In effect, if you press the throttle up on your transmitter, you should see the throttle bar increase in Betaflight. Test all the different movements, roll, yaw, pitch, and throttle, to make sure that everything is working as it should. Similarly, check that your switches work and note which auxiliary switch number matches the switches on your transmitter. For most setups, like the trans that we're using, you're going to have to configure the switches on the transmitter first for them to register in Betaflight. 
Luckily, there are a ton of guides on this as well for every single transmitter on the market. Just search for Tyrannus mixer settings to find plenty of videos on the subject for the Tyrannus. We're going to use our switch info later when we set up the switches for arming our quad and changing the flight modes. After making sure that the inputs are working as expected, we want to make sure that the endpoints for each input are correct. More or less, you want your controls to center at 1500 and go from 1000 on the low side to 2000 on the high side. You can make adjustments using the trim on your transmitter if these values are off. Check your transmitter's documentation or just search YouTube for information on adjusting the trim settings for your transmitter. Finally, you may notice that even after trimming everything out, you have a bit of drift where the numbers change a bit and don't perfectly center. That's totally normal. To account for this, we're going to add a little bit of deadband in the RC deadband and yaw deadband fields. The easiest way to do this is see how far the numbers are moving from center, and that difference will be your deadband number. So if you're swinging between, say, 1498 and 1500 on your yaw, then you're going to want to add 2 to the yaw deadband field. And finally, be sure to save after making all of these changes. Next, we're going to configure our modes. This is going to allow us to set up commands to the switches on our transmitter. For most pilots, we would recommend at least setting up an arm switch to arm and disarm your quad and a flight mode switch to change the flight modes. To set this up, we'll click on the Add Range button under Arm. For this setup, we also added Air Mode as we wanted to default to that instead of the default Acro Mode. It's basically a smoother Acro Mode when you apply less throttle. Since we want Air Mode to be our default, we're going to add the range to be the same as our Arm Mode on the same switch. If you just want Acro to be your default, then you don't have to add an additional range, just the arm range. And of course, this will work with any mode you want to set up if you don't want to default to Acro. If you're just starting out and want to use Level or some type of Horizon mode, you can use that instead. After adding these ranges, set the AUX button to the corresponding switch on your transmitter. When you move the switch, you should see the notch below the main bar adjust based on the position. You want to move your switch into the position that you want and then adjust the range fields so that the notch is between the highlighted section on the bar. Hit save and then flip the switches off and on. When on, you should see now that the range is highlighted orange to show that it's set up correctly. For flight modes, we'll select a different auxiliary switch and repeat the same process. We added angle and horizon modes here to show how three setups would go. Repeat the same process as above by adding the ranges you want, select your flight mode auxiliary switch, and then move the highlighted areas to where you want the switch position to be for that mode. Again, you can save and then test the switches to see if everything worked as expected. Remember though to leave one position in your flight mode switch blank for the default mode that you set up with your arm switch. Setting up your failsafe is extremely important to prevent fly-offs in case your transmitter loses connectivity with your receiver. We're more or less going to be setting up a kill signal that's going to activate if signal loss occurs. Before we set this up, we need to test that our failsafe works between our transmitter and our receiver in the first place. To do so, go back to the receiver tab and take a look at the throttle bar. As we discussed earlier, your zero throttle position should be registering 1000. Now turn off your transmitter. If your failsafe is configured correctly, you should see the throttle position drop to some number below 1000. In our case, it's 885. If the throttle number stays at 1000, then your failsafe is not set up correctly and you're going to have to refer to your receiver's manual on binding. So to set up the failsafe on our flight controller, we'll go to the failsafe tab and reference the number that we saw on the receiver tab when the transmitter was turned off. Again, in our case, that was 885. First thing to do is make sure that the Enable Failsafe Stage 2 button is selected under Settings. Next, under the Valid Pulse Range settings, set the minimum length to about 5 over your recorded number. In our case, we'll put 890 because our original number was 885. So what all this means is that when the transmitter disconnects from the receiver, the 885 number the receiver registers will trigger the failsafe because it's going to be below the 890 setting that we've input for the minimum pulse length. In turn, your quad will drop out of the air instead of flying off someplace that you don't want it to go. Once you're all done here, hit save, and you're done with setting up your failsafe. The PID tuning tab allows us to tweak how our quadcopter flies. The previous steps have been more or less enabling our quadcopter to fly, while the PID tuning tab really enables us to customize the quad to fly how we want it to. Eventually, you're going to want to learn all the values in here, but for our first setup, we're just going to cover the basics. The default PIDs, the columns labeled Proportional, Integral, and Derivative, will most likely be fine running Betaflight 3.0 and beyond. As long as when you eventually fly your quad there's no obvious shaking or oscillation, you probably don't need to touch these much at this point. However, you might want to play with the RC rate and super rate figures. These are going to control how snappy your quadcopter is. The control curve will show how the changes you make here will translate to your stick movements. Think of it this way. 
The graph will show how your quad will react when your stick passes the given point on the x-axis on the chart. If this is your first setup, just roll with the defaults and adjust accordingly after your first flight. If you find yourself overcorrecting and find the sticks are too sensitive, half all of the rates and adjust from there. Look to the control curve and make changes that are noticeably different to really see the impact to your rates. As your flying skills advance, you're going to want to revisit this page often to continuously bump up your rates. Remember in our earlier steps how we activated that black box button on the configuration tab? Now we're going to set it up. This is super easy. Just change the black box logging rate to 250 hertz or lower. Anything higher will consume CPU cycles in your flight controller and fill up the log faster without providing any useful data. Save and reboot and you're done. Alright, so before we put the props back on and go flying, we want to perform a few safety checks. With the battery plugged in, arm your quadcopter from the transmitter and verify that your motors are spinning in the correct direction. An easy trick that we like for this is taking a few extra zip tie parts and slipping them under the casing on top of the motor. This can help you quickly identify if everything is spinning up as it should without the risk of a nasty prop accident. Next, with the motor still spinning, shut off your transmitter. Your quad should disarm within a few seconds of the transmitter fully powering off. If not, you need to review your failsafe settings again. After that, let's turn the transmitter back on and arm the quadcopter again. Check the CPU load info at the bottom of the screen. If it ever indicates 100%, you're going to be overworking your flight controller and could have issues when flying. Lower the loop time or remove features to lower the load if this is the case. Finally, back up your settings by pressing the backup button. We highly recommend having some sort of folder that contains all of your settings. This includes the beta flight configuration backup, your flight controller and DSC firmware, and your black box files. This way, if you ever need to fix or update anything, you can easily access everything without repeating all of the other steps. Now with all of this done, you should be ready to fly. Hopefully this guide has been helpful in setting up all of your software. If you want more information on advanced features such as setting up a notch filter or easy tuning using in-flight adjustments, be sure to check out our guides on propwash.com or subscribe to this channel for more videos.